Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, coming to, to my uh, first talk at Black Hat, and uh, uh, so happy to be here with you. So we're going to talk today about uh, vulnerabilities, um, old and uh, uh, tasks that we all do, and it looks like uh, uh, we are uh, uh, keeping uh, keeping up with an endless. Uh, uh, we're not keeping up with an endless war between the patch and vulnerabilities. So uh, my um, co-presenter, Nabil, is uh, not feeling well, so he's not coming today to present with me. So, um, like I said, we're going to discuss a little bit today about uh, what we found out uh, in terms of uh, analyzing all vulnerabilities um, based on our work at VFID, which is a, a startup which is dedicated to maintain a vulnerability database uh, since uh, 10 years now. Well, not in more startup, but a uh, little bit more than startup now. Um, and we're going to uh, discuss how we are moving from management of vulnerabilities to intelligence uh, uh, vulnerabilities. Like it's now, we're not talking about anymore about managing vulnerabilities, but more like a, a big data uh, of vulnerabilities that we need to uh, work on. So before I start uh, a little bit about myself, um, uh, I used to be the CEO of NetPeace. It's a cloud vulnerability uh, uh, management uh, uh, solution in, in, in the cloud. Um, I'm now an uh, advisory board at uh, 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 vefit.io, which is the startup which is doing the uh, vulnerability database. Um, and I'm now Office of a CISO at ServiceNow. And uh, that's uh, who I am uh, in terms of security. The last 15 years is what I've been working on. Uh, one more thing yeah, I forgot to put in the slide, actually, I'm also in the Arsenal review board, so uh, please make sure you come. Uh, I see some people uh, from Arsenal here as well, thank you for coming. Please also come to Arsenal to, to review the uh, open source security tools. So. so what we find out from different analyses, and here is from Ponemon, but all of them state the same thing, is um, the majority of companies are not improving their vulnerability uh, management, right? They are not able to detect quickly and fix quickly the vulnerabilities, right? And why is that? Why we are not able to uh, quickly detect, quickly remediate any vulnerabilities, right? So why is it? Why we are still in this endless race? So what happened? So uh, that's the question we're trying to answer today, or not answer basically, but give you um, our experience on that, on that, on that war. On, again, on that world, that task of uh, uh, keeping up with uh, vulnerabilities. Yes, just uh, again some data just to put in perspective. Uh, critical vulnerability make, um, can take up, out, up to 12 days uh, before being fixed. It's more or less, some study put more or less, um, I don't know your experience here, maybe it's going to be interesting if you have some data. If someone have any data to share, we'll be happy to, to have it as well. Um, again, why is, still, why, is it, why is it that? Why, why don't we have to, to take so much time to, uh, to fix a, a critical vulnerability who may impact your confidentiality, integrity, availability, resilience of your organization? Why is that? So, but first, let me try to define what is a critical vulnerability. Why, why, how do we define something to be critical? I, and that's what we found out to be difficult because with all the number of vulnerabilities between you can get into your uh, uh, infrastructure or, or information system, what do, how do you define a critical vulnerabilities? So, uh, some standards trying to, to, to do that by, um, as you know, the NVD has been able to, uh, has, been, has been published in the CBSS score, but what else, what more can you, how, how, how do you define a critical vulnerability into your own organization, right? So, that's what we're also trying to help with our database at VFID is to provide much more information to help you prioritize vulnerabilities, right? Based on, we will see later all the different factors, all the different uh, data and information you can use to actually um, uh, define what is critical for you to work on right away, okay? And uh, yes, as I said, yes, CBSS is what's one thing that's been used I don't, I don't know, I don't think people is using it a lot based to, 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 to prioritize their work, but, um, uh, uh, and this definitively, uh, when you are not able to prioritize correctly your work, this will lead to delays uh, and uh, uh, issues for your organization to, to, uh, to patch and work on your, on your, on your vulnerabilities. Um. Okay. 
Yes, definitively you find out that security teams spend more time um, nav navigating manual processes, you know, between this can be uh, when you raise a team who are using the scanners, the team who are patching, there are always different teams, not, uh, uh, and it takes a lot of time to kind of coordinate this team, right? Um, so that's one of the major issues we also find into vulnerability management. So to analyze this task, here are some numbers to kind of, uh, uh, how, how do you keep up with uh, monitoring systems for your vulnerabilities? So here are some numbers. It can be more or less dependent on organization, but yeah, if you just monitor in threats and vulnerabilities on your organization, which is what it will cost you, more or less, right? So it's still a, a high number just to keep up with uh, monitoring these threats. And when you look, there, there are some organizations who, who try to actually um, standardize this. Well, you know all of these logos here, and uh, are they helping, are they not helping? But what we found out is actually, they can be very helpful if you're able to connect them together, right? If you're able to, to link a CVE to a MITRE attack, um, of course, to a CPE, to a CWE, to a, to a CAPEC, this can help. We found out that by, it by themselves, one by one, I'm not sure they are very helpful, but if you're able to link, connect them together, that's where we found out that they will help you much more to prioritize uh, vulnerability management and the uh, remediation of your vulnerabilities. So we have also a uh, list down here that we found out the last years, the top 10 exploited vulnerabilities, and as you know, the majority of a breach come from uh, exploitation of a vulnerability. So here are the top 10 that we find out here um, based on, yeah. That's why we have, that, that it helps to prioritize vulnerabilities, right? Any, any exploit links to that vulnerability or uh, any automation exploitation exists in your vulnerabilities. So um, yeah, the ease of exploitability of that vulnerability. Um, the, um, the, use, the use of this vulnerability in the wild, how much people are actually exploiting this vulnerability in the wild. Um, and is, is there any campaign going on using that vulnerability? So based on all these factors, we've been able to actually classify the top 10 uh, CVEs uh, uh, vulnerabilities that we found uh, right there, uh, out there. Um, any comments we can give in that uh, list? Uh, of course, Microsoft's still on top of, uh, of the majority of uh, CVEs. Um, yeah. So anyway, you probably organize all of this, but that's the way we, we, that is important here is how we are able to actually uh, uh, prioritize this top 10. How we come up to this top 10 is based on the number of factors to help us prioritize our work in terms of uh, vulnerability management. Here also, again, I uh, talked before about the connection between uh, uh, standards. Here is uh, uh, the top 10 most use MITRE attack uh, 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 techniques uh, that we've been able to also to, to, to list down. Here's the top five here, and the next slide is number five. Um, yeah, what is interesting here to find to see is uh, uh, yeah techniques to send malicious files. You know, every day there is thousands of, mal of malware being created and sent everywhere. It's still on the top techniques techniques to attack uh, organization. Um, token manipulation is also, you have two of them in that list, so it's still also top in the list of uh, uh, attack right there. So based on all our database of vulnerability, we, that's, that's where the list comes from, right? So, um, you b so that's, uh, 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 yeah, the MITRE attack top 10 from the uh, analysis. Yeah, same thing. If you look at the, uh, uh, some of the reports on the IoT or OT vulnerabilities, again, these are, they also list, you will see, I will not list them here, but they also list down 25 CVEs that are commonly used to attack the, uh, this kind of network. Um, and, um, uh, and again, these are coming from the standard, which can help you to, which can help out also to uh, mitigate your uh, uh, environment. And um, of course, these are much more sensitive in terms of uh, uh, availability and the resilience of this environment. So just to mention the IoT and OT space. 
So a little bit more analysis into these vulnerabilities. We found out that 70% uh, of the CVEs um, have a connection to this top 10 attack, uh, uh, MITRE attack list, okay? Yes, this is interesting um, as well. Again, this can help also uh, when you do this connection, you are able to rapidly uh, prioritize your work, right? Um, so that's an analysis we've done as well, is be able to list down uh, from the top 10 CVEs, which are the top 10 uh, MITRE attack list uh, connected to, to those CVEs. So let me try to uh, uh, move on to the different factors for prioritization that we find out. Yes, so again, yes, how do you prioritize your, your, your vulnerability management or vulnerability intelligence task? We, find we have also in our analysis find out here are four factors that can be useful. First one is the exploitability. Again, there's an exploit, how easy it is to, 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 to uh, execute it. Uh, that's one factor. The other factor is what we call scannability. What we call scannability is, do you have, a, um, uh, let's say, a, a script or a signature that you can easily run on your infrastructure to once you find a CVE or a vulnerability to quickly detect that uh, vulnerabilities in your network? Uh, because you're not going to scan, you know, you have thousands or uh, hundreds of thousands or millions of, of, of IPs, so it's going to be difficult to scan them all. It's going to take time. So how... how how do you have the capabilities to quickly have a signature to that specific vulnerability to actually scan your overall uh, infrastructure and find which asset is actually to, uh, vulnerable to that uh, specific uh, uh, CVEs or, or, yeah. So that's another factor to take into account in your calculation. Popularity, yes, that's another factor which is interesting to, uh, to prioritize your, uh, your work is actually... Um, how much is it used in the wild? How much people are actually using that CVE to exploit, uh, uh, to exploit the infrastructure? Yeah, how often it is used? How much people are using it on GitHub, Twitter, any other dark web, any other thing? So how do you, are you able to get this information to kind of help you prioritize that CVE? Okay, that's another imp important uh, uh, factor we think is uh, uh, helpful to prioritize uh, your work. And is there any mitigation in place? I mean, is there any IPS, IDS signatures that you can use? Of course, any patch, uh, where is it? Is it accessible? Uh, so again, here are what we find uh, very helpful, four factors uh, to prioritize your uh, vulnerability management, which are um, uh, useful and important. So again, it's, um, yeah, it's more than just uh, uh, having a list of vulnerabilities and work of them based on CBSS and criticality. Um, uh, if, you, if you are able to use this uh, big data information based on these factors, that's how you can prioritize your work. We found out that, yeah, our data that we, we gather is used by, there are many companies which is the only business is actually just to do that, just to do the prioritization based on all these factors. So, again, um, yeah, so sometimes you can do it for your own, your, yourself. I mean, some people use also these factors to uh, create uh, their, their own prioritization. Okay. Okay. I think I've been criticized myself without Nabil with me. So, in the conclusion, yes, automation is key with the world of big data. Uh, uh, it's, this is key to navigate the world of, uh, of big vulnerability data, which is how I call it now. So, um, standards are helpful, but they really need to make interconnection between them, to really make uh, use of them as much as you can. Okay. Um, yeah, so that is my conclu the conclusion of the, of the talk today. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, we have plenty of time now to answer them. So please let me know. Thank you. <laughs>